Good morning. Let's praise God together. There is beyond the azure blue a God can sit from human side. He can discard with heavenly view and train the world with his great mind. There is a God, there is a God, he is alive, he is alive. in him we live, and we survive from the dark God, created man, he is our God, the great our Good morning and welcome, church. I'm glad that you are with me uh, digitally. I'm not sure if you're over there or if you're over there, um, but I'm very glad that we are worshiping together. Uh, you may be in your living room. You may be on your mobile device. Uh, you may be on your computer in your office. Uh, you may even be a little late. This may be Sunday afternoon for you or Sunday evening. But for us, this Sunday morning, I'm glad we are doing this together. I enjoyed singing uh, that song uh, with my family in the living room. Um, and I'm just, uh, I miss you, church, from the bottom of my heart. Uh, this is the second week we've been doing this. And uh, this welcome normally is we hug each other, we tell each other what's going on, uh, we might even pray together. I miss that, church. Um, so wherever you are, uh, I want to try something this morning before we do our announcements, before we do our prayer. Um, if you have your mobile device with you this morning, your phone, um, I, you might press pause here in just a second on the uh, YouTube channel. But go ahead, I want you to reach out this morning to someone and tell them uh, that you would normally be worshiping with. Tell them that you love them. Tell them that you're worshiping with them this morning and just reach out and say, I miss you. I love you. Uh, I'm going to reach out to Matt Wilson and tell him that I love him. And I don't know where he is right now, but I'm going to tell him I wish he was here. Because if he was here, and normally he'd be sitting over in this area, I would walk over and I would give him a hug and tell him that I love him and tell him that I miss him. And I'd even ask him how his week is going. So I'd like you to do that. Maybe you don't have a mobile device. Maybe you can do it uh, on the comment section. You can press pause and do the comments on the YouTube channel. Now everyone will see it. So whoever you reach out to, everyone will be able to read it. If you don't have the ability to do that, maybe on the Facebook page for Mount Comfort. Let's do it there. Reach out, do a comment there. But let's take some time to do that. Press pause here, and when I come back, we'll do announcements, we'll do a prayer, and we'll continue on with our worship service. Thanks.
all right. I hope you guys were successful at reaching out to some of our uh, church members, and we're still in this as a family, um, and Christ connects us. I've got a few announcements to go over, so we're going to continue with our 10 a.m. Uh, Sunday service that you'll see uh, Nathan uh, preaching and different people praying and stuff. We're still doing that. We also have a 7 p.m. Uh, Wednesday night uh, Bible class that Nathan will be doing, so you'll see that video here on this YouTube channel. Uh, also, uh, Sarah Chance is working on some Sunday morning children's uh, education stuff. So look to the uh, Facebook uh, group uh, and see some information there, but there's going to be uh, different uh, Bible verses. There's going to be crafts you can do. And so be looking for that, um, looking forward to that uh, with the children's educational stuff. Um, as far as youth group stuff, uh, Matt is doing some Facebook Live uh, Bible uh, discussions and Bible classes, and he's, uh, I think, already done some of that, and he's, gonna, he's planning on doing more of that to connect with the uh, teens. Um, also in the college group, the RFCs, uh, Steve and I have talked briefly about it last week. We still have a lot of that in the works with Zoom, where it would be two-way uh, video conferencing there. Uh, we still have some of that in the works, and we're ironing that out. Uh, they're on spring break this week, so we have some time to work that out. But also, just like before, uh, work on uh, calling, phone calls, text, Facebook, uh, read your bulletin. Um, let's continue to try to be connected um, because we are a family. Uh, Christ still bonds us together even though we're not able to meet uh, each other, uh, meet together each week. Uh, I'm going to have a prayer, and then we're going to continue with our worship service. Would you pray with me? Father, uh, thank you for how you have blessed us so much in the past with material blessings, uh, with the ability to, to have uh, that we can worship together digitally uh, this morning with our phones and our TVs and our computers. But Lord, also uh, thank you for our homes, uh, for where we are right now. We, are, uh, we have a comfortable place where we can worship together. You have blessed us with so much and we are so thankful for that. Lord, we also ask uh, for comfort uh, for those folks that are struggling. <clears throat> and Lord, you just, we just ask that you wrap your arms around those folks that are struggling at this time. Um, we ask that you would protect and comfort and strengthen health care workers uh, for police and for fire and for folks that are working through this as essential services. Lord, we ask that you would be with those folks that um, are getting furloughed right now, that are working at home and maybe struggling with that, or maybe have been furloughed and are not able to work at home. Um, Lord, we just ask that um, you bring comfort and you bring peace and strength to all folks in all walks of life right now. And Lord, that you would be with us in this worship service, that you would help us to lift our voices together, that you would connect us together as we worship you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. All day long of Jesus I am singing in my song of joy.
Why did my Savior come to earth and to the humble world? Why did he choose the lowly birth? Because he loved me so. for the Lord's Supper. I would like to read something that I borrowed from a brother at another congregation, but before I do that, I want everybody to take their uh, communion container and go ahead and, and pull the tape back on the top, expose the wafer, hold that in your hand so that we can all take this at the same time after I finish reading. If our greatest need was laughter, God would have sent a comedian. If our greatest need was political, God would have sent a politician. If our greatest need was financial, God would have sent a financial advisor. If our greatest need was recreation, God would have sent a hunting guide. Our greatest need as a result of our sins was reconciliation, forgiveness, deliverance, and hope. So God sent a Savior. You got a Bible, turn to Galatians 4, beginning in verse 4. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. Pray with me, please. Father God, we recognize you as the creator. Father, you are omnipotent omnipresent and omniscient. You knew before time began that we would need a Redeemer. So you sent Jesus to live a perfect life and example and then to die a horrible and cruel death on the cross. So we remember his sacrifice now by eating of the bread that represents his body because he asked us to do it. It's in his name that we pray. Amen.
Okay, likewise, would you go ahead and open the cup and hold it in your hand? Pray with me again. Father, we continue this memorial service by considering the magnitude of what Jesus did for us. We are going through some uncertain times in this country and the world. There is some anxiety and nervousness because of the battle that we are in with this unseen enemy. But Father, we know that whatever this life brings, we have already won the war. Christ's blood has cleansed us so that we stand in your presence as white as snow. So we drink this cup that symbolizes the blood of Christ because he asked us to do it. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Nathan asked me to read this. Even as it seems our lives have ground to a halt, one blessing is much of the work our church family is involved in is continuing. On the screen are avenues you can use to keep supporting our ministries as we go to the Lord in prayer, thanking him for the blessing of giving. Pray with me once again. Father God, you are so very good to us. You've blessed us, Father, so very richly, and we're thankful for everything. Father, we are grateful for the opportunity to give back to you. And we pray, Father, that uh, the funds that are given will be used to continue to your uh, work here in this community, in this body, and the world abroad. Father, please continue to bless us in every way. Always help us be good Christian examples. And Father, forgive us our failings. It's through Christ that we pray. Amen. We will glorify the King of kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will sure hope you enjoyed our time together to this point, enjoyed the singing. Uh, I sure appreciate David and Philip taking a part in the service this morning. Both of them did a great job. Uh, we, our text this morning is going to be in 1 Peter. If you want to go ahead and turn to 1 Peter 1, we'll be there uh, in just a few minutes. We uh, 
have an anniversary this week to celebrate. Philip, uh, Dean, and I just said Philip, Dean and Tanya Lacey uh, celebrated their 57th wedding anniversary this past week. Uh, I believe it was Wednesday this past week, and we want to congratulate them. Um, uh, the ladies are nice enough to give me a, a, a list of all the anniversaries, and, and, uh, and I noticed that uh, uh, Mario, uh, you guys are only at 40. Look, we're only at 42. We're, we don't qualify yet. You know, we're only mentioning 50s and over. So, but we, but we congratulate the Lacys. And, and, uh, and, and, and I, I want to echo something that, Dave, uh, that David said in the welcome. This is a great opportunity for us uh, uh, to step out and do something that's uncomfortable for us. Um, we, we get so used to being here on a regular basis, once, twice, three times a week together, uh, that this is an easy touchstone for us. And it's a great blessing from God. But, but please remember to utilize all the opportunities, all the different ways God has given us uh, to continue to reach out to each other, as well as reach out to people in your neighborhood. Uh, they're feeling as lonely as you are. They're feeling as boxed in as you are. And, and this is a good chance for us uh, to show them Christ as well. Uh, first Peter, Peter uh, is towards the end of Peter's life, and, uh, and, he, and he writes these letters. And actually, uh, it's not really part of the lesson, but uh, most scholarship tends to argue that this is really one letter that was uh, broken down into two pieces later on, but I don't know if that, that's the case or not. But we're going to read uh, the first part of chapter uh, 1 this morning. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, exiles scattered throughout the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, who've been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God, the, the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials, these have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you've not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, even angels long to look into these things. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, the gift of your Son, the gift of salvation in him, the gift of the family that you have placed us in, the gift of the home that awaits us. It's so easy, and particularly in the times that we live in, to not see these things in, the, in an immediacy and instead to see the immediacy of the struggle, of the heartache, of the disenfranchisement. Lord, this morning, help us to set all those things aside. For this, for this few minutes together, help us to set all of the realities of this life and put it down. And to just to hear you. To hear what you've done for us. To hear 
what you're doing in us to hear what awaits us. We thank you for the gift of church. We thank you for the gift of being able to gather together. We thank you for the gift of your word. Help us to open up our hearts and our eyes to what you would teach us this morning. And it's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. I suppose if there's a few words that's pretty much on everybody's lips this morning, the words are, I am ready for this to be over with. Is that fair? I think we're all ready for it to be done. And the reality is we don't know how long it is, but, I, but it seemed fitting to me that what we should do is, is that we should spend a few minutes this morning actually looking at a different set of words. So what we're going to do is in this text, these 12 verses, there are five words that I'd like us to highlight this morning. Five different messages that God has sent to us through his disciple uh, Peter as he wrote this letter. The first is, the very first verse, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to God's elect exiles. Now, of course, we know Peter is talking about the church of the time. There actually is an argument that because Jewish persecution is almost certainly in in pretty much full swing by the time he's writing this letter, that he's talking about those who've been displaced out of the Jewish community, uh, displaced out of the synagogue, and are now finding themselves once again like their forefathers who were exiles before entering the promised land, that they are exiles or exiles even after the, uh, the Assyrians and the, and the Babylonians came through and destroyed the, uh, the land, that they are now finding themselves as exiles from what they knew to be the norm. But you know, the reality is Peter's not just talking about them. All of us in one form or another, actually as believers are exiles. Now, it seems that that exile has taken a whole different meaning here in recent weeks because some of us are exiled from our places of work. Some of us have been exiled permanently out of our jobs. Some of us are are exiled to to hang at home with the kids. And for us, for some of us, maybe that's a little uncomfortable. Or or now there's a wife who was at home and stuck with your husband at home, and maybe that's a little uncomfortable. There's all kinds of exile dilemmas. The reality is, though, is that we're exiles in a different truth. We are exiles away from God for a time. There's a favorite song in the, song, in the book, and I, and I actually told Teresa when we were getting ready, talking about the layout for this service, that I, I had thought about at this point trying to lead this song and you guys sing along with me at home. But to tell you the truth, the idea of me hearing myself singing solo is too painful to even contemplate, so we're not going to do that. But, but the song is, This World is Not My Home. It's actually a declaration of being an exile. Now, we're not exiled because we were in heaven and away from it, and I know from a technical standpoint that does not the right way way to put it, but, but, but we are apart from home. We're apart from where we're meant to be. We were meant to be with God. Adam and Eve were looking at him face to, I I don't know, I actually still find this hard to imagine. Adam and Eve were looking face to face with God each and every day. Adam got to walk with him in the garden. Can you imagine getting to walk with, with, with God every day in the garden? I can't because it's beyond our scope. But that's what Adam experienced before sin removed him from what was supposed to be. We're exiles from what was supposed to be. Supposed to be fully in God's relation, in relationship with God. Fully invested in being face to face with God. Fully in that purity of righteousness of being in God's care. Not needing a redeemer. Not needing the graciousness of God to cover us every day. You know, not needing uh, all of the things that God has gratefully brought to us. Because it's not who we were meant to be. I believe it's important that we realize that this world is not home. We're exiled here for a time, but that time won't last long. The second word is actually in the second verse, and it's a word that, that's, that's more often really recognized, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. 
When Paul is writing to the, Th- to the uh, Ephesians, Paul said that God chose us before the creation of the world. Now, now this morning, I, I'm not, whether you're one who believes that the earth is less than 100,000 years old and creation was in six strict 24-hour days, whether you're a person who believes that God's hand uh, was on this planet over a period of millennia as he was creating uh, everything, it, it, that, it, that millennia in our time frame, not in God's, it, it, you know, but that God was in charge of it, I don't care how far back it is. I imagine the fact that it's not that God called you because you went into sin. It's not that God chose you because he finally figured out about you that you were going to be good enough. It's before anybody knew your parents or your grandparents or your great-grandparents or before the the first people were walking on the planet, before any of that took place, God chose you. Have you ever thought about what that really says? Have you, have you really contemplated the depth of what that means? You know, I used to, it's kind of the, one of those things that used to make my head hurt because, because I, trying to put it into perspective and trying to give it, you know, a reason. I, I couldn't really grasp, you know, how this all worked together. And what I realized is, is that this truth isn't meant for me to understand. This truth is meant for me to have just a little inkling into the true depth of what it means that God is omniscient. Just a, a little thumbnail of, of, the, of the wonder of a God who has all knowledge who has all power, who has all ability, and who has all of it in in, in a manner that is is greater than the sum total of everything we'll ever experience in in our world's history. And that that God, that great being, that that wonderful creator who could have anything he wanted, who could could have people be anything he chose, who, who could have this planet be in any form he wanted, chose you. Thousands of years ago. You weren't a mistake that God fixed. You weren't an error that he corrected. You weren't weren't the oops, I didn't see that one coming, that he had to rush to to fix something, to put something out there, to, to make it all right. In his infinite wisdom, he showed us love by giving us free choice. In, in his infinite grace, he showed us mercy by sending his son. But all of that was set in place long before we ever existed. Why? Because God is God and we are not. You were chosen. What a marvelous term. And then down in verse 4, Peter talks about an inheritance, an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept, and that's the word I want you to underline, kept in heaven for you. How many of you have retirement? How many of you retirement last, this last week took a real dive? Houston, Houston, and I, I don't think he minds me bringing him up, but back in the 08, 09, 08, and 10 uh, uh, crash, I guess, it, there was, I guess it was considered a crash. They, he, had his, he had his set, set how they were gonna, he and Jenny were going to live. They weren't living extravagantly, but they had it all figured out, and it all went south. And like a lot of us at this age, it's too late to get it back. Too late, to, too late to spend the decades to recover it that maybe some younger people are going to be able to do. Government promises. Government doesn't keep its promise. Businesses guarantee that they'll still be there. Then your job goes away. Spouses promise and then desert the home. We're so gun shy of trusting anybody. We're so, we're so hurt because of the number of times we've seen other people fail us. 
And so the idea of, of being able to lay our hands on something that the guarantee that it's been, that it is there and it's being kept for you. Some of you young people don't remember, but there's actually a time when they put Social Security in the bank, it actually had your name on it, and they were starting to gain interest for you with your money. And it was never going to be touched. Can anybody say Lyndon Johnson and the Great Society? And every president after that has raided the Social Security. It's hard for us to imagine it's true. But that, see, that's why it's such a big deal. Because what he says is, is, is he says, he says, everything about this world spoils or fades. See, everything about this world perishes, spoils and fades. Everything about it, it's all temporary. The reality is, the reality is, is you can have the biggest pile of money in the world. Guess what's happening when your life is over with? It's fading away. In, in your existence, it's fading away. It doesn't, it's not there anymore. And so he says, but see, he says that, that this inheritance, see, this inheritance, you maybe can't see it, but this inheritance is being kept in the bank of all banks. It's the hands of the living God. This inheritance is being kept in the safest depository that could ever exist, and that is heaven, the heaven where God, his Son, and his Spirit reside. This inheritance is being kept. We have people in our congregation who've been disappointed. We have people in our congregation who've been hurt. We have people in our congregation in the last two or three weeks who've lost maybe lost everything in our own family. One of Lynn's sisters, the, the husband's job is being reduced in pay. The, 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 the wife's job is going away in six weeks. They have two kids at home. They, they're really, they don't know what the prospects are at the moment. In Peter's time, they were looking at Lucy losing their businesses because they, the Jews were, were kicking them out of their businesses. They were looking at losing their homes because they no longer wanted them wherever, wherever it was, in, 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 even in Asia Minor, in the, in no longer in the Jewish enclave. They weren't welcome anymore. That inheritance, you see, that was supposed to be theirs, where they had the Jewish community surrounding them, that inheritance that was the guarantee, you see, that they were going to be looked after by following Jewish law. You see, that, all of that inheritance went away. Way. And see, Peter's going, I know what that is. But you see, there's an inheritance that can never go away. There's an inheritance in heaven for you. And listen to what it says. It says, shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation to be ready, to, is to be ready, at the, at, at revealed in the last time. In all this, now this isn't one of the five words, but in all this, I love this line. He says, you greatly rejoice. Now that sounds really good. And by the way, when this thing is over with, and it's going to be over with at some point, boy, there's going to be great rejoicing. When people can get back to work, <laughs> and some of us, some people I'm guessing would never have thought they would say that in a million years, they'll greatly rejoice. Because it'll seem normal. See, it'll seem like, but like getting, getting back to normal. But he says, in all of this you greatly rejoice. Now listen, how, listen what the greatly rejoice is. Though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. In other words, he says, you, were, you got this to rejoice. You got because it's being kept for you. You got this to rejoice because you've been chosen by God. You got this to rejoice because even as an exile, you know whose hands you're in. But then he kind of brings them back down and he says, but, and even though we're greatly rejoicing, there's suffering and there's trial. I don't know if you're a person who thinks that the death toll has been way overrated during the coronavirus. I don't know if you're one of the people who think it's gonna, the death toll is going to be six or seven figures. Because there's been every prediction under the sun and quite frankly, but this side of God, none of us know the truth. None of us know which is going to be. In the last 24 hours, one of the hospitals in New York City had 13 people die. Regardless of what we know or don't know, regardless of what's going on in our own state, 
Thousands have died in Italy. There's grief and there's suffering and there's struggle that's going on in this world. And we may ask God, we may say, why in the, Lord, why in the world would you let this happen? Why, why have this happened to us? You know, we may be like those people who Jesus, you know, he said, well, we followed you. We, you know, we called on your name. You know, uh, you know we helped other people in your name. Why, why, why would you allow this to befall us? And I'm telling you, I've read this and read this, and I've read this over the years, and this is the part that stopped me that I had not ever really paid close attention to. He says, you may have had to suffer griefs and all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute. See, your next word here is gold. They used to call it the gold standard. Actually, some of you may, may or may not know, depending on if you know your history or not, there was a time that actually all governments only had as much money in circulation in the, in the country as, as they had gold on deposit as a, as a national entity. Now, it's been since the, somewhere in the early part of the 20th century that we stopped doing that, and the rest of the world has too. Every one of us, though, has what's called the gold standard. It's those, those things that are more important to us than anything else. It's those things that are, that are of, 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 of a value that we're willing to fight for. There's any number of husbands that are just like me. We'd fight for our wife and our family. What, you know, and what, what, I don't know what your gold standard is. See, I don't know what, what, what qualifies in that concept for you. But, but what he says here is, is that the griefs and the trials have come along that, that, that you might discover or might see the proof of the genuine, genuineness. And by the way, I don't know why in the world they use that word. Genuineness of your faith, which is more important than gold. See, here's the thing. You know, uh, so that we can see the Lord. Okay, we, find, we you know, people understand that. Uh, so, that we, so that we might grow closer to one another. People understand that. But here he says, he says you remember and I told you, they're facing trials. They're getting kicked out of their enclaves. They're getting kicked out of the Jewish community. They're getting separated from their families. They're, they're getting law, losing their businesses, losing their homes. And he says, these trials you're facing, not so that you can fi- that, that you see God necessarily, not that you, that your the reality of your faith. You can find the reality of your faith. You can experience the reality of your faith. Have you asked God why this is going on right now? I know I have. But the same way I asked Him why in the world the bird flu or the swine flu when it hit or the Zika that hit and killed so many thousands of people around the world. It's interesting that what, the way Peter words it here, he says, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials, but these have come so that you discover the reality that you have faith. Are you mean to tell me, God, that what you've done is you've given me these things so that I can discover something about myself? Yeah, ask Abraham, who had a knife held in his hand over his son's chest, getting ready to plunge it into his chest. Why in the world did God ask him to sacrifice the very son that he had promised him, and it took him till 100 years old before he finally got him, and now as a teenager, he's being asked to sacrifice him so that Abraham could discover the genuineness of his faith? Why Goliath? So that David could discover the genuineness of his faith. Why the need for the ten plagues? So the children of Israel could be challenged to, 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 to discover the genuineness of their faith. Am I saying that this is God? God is plunging the world. Look, I, why God is doing it, I don't know. I don't have that answer. But what I have is an answer that God has put in front of me that for the believer, God's giving me an opportunity to see that I have faith. What's your gold standard this morning? 
What is the thing that you wouldn't do without? If there's anything that lies above your faith and your trust in your Savior, maybe it's in the wrong place. And then it was really interesting at the end, if, you, if, you, if we go to verse 12, or uh, let's, let's, let's back up just a little bit. Let's pick it up in 10. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and the circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you. They were pursuing God. And he says it, it turns out they weren't doing it just for themselves. They were doing it to serve you. Hebrews 11, the end of the, end of the chapter. It talks about the great heroes of faith, right? And, and it says that, you know, that, that you know, the, oh, it talks about all, all the things that Moses and Abraham and, you know, and, and David, and then it goes, goes through, starts going through all the names, and I don't even have time to mention, right? And it says more and more of them, and he says, and he says, the, and the, the big thing is, he says, they did all this having never seen what they were waiting for. See, because they weren't doing it for themselves. They were doing it for all of us down the line who, are, who are, the, are the recipients of what came 2,000 years ago when Jesus came to earth. Now, I want you to stick with me because this part, I've been staring at this for 24 hours, and this is going to get, you know, and Lynn tells me sometimes I get convoluted, and I'm going to try not to, okay? I just told you that maybe what God is offering us is to find out that having faith in him is the true gold standard, right? But then he teaches me, well, but we're not doing it to serve ourselves. We're doing it to serve others. We're doing it to let them see Christ. See, we're not doing this just so that we can have faith. We're not doing this just so that we can know. We're not doing this just so that we have assurance. We're doing this so that others can see that it's real. Others can experience that, that, that same wonder of, that, of being chosen, of being called, uh, of experience that, experience that faith and that, that cleansing of power of the salvation through Jesus Christ. You see, he says all of them, he says they were doing this. They were following. They were pursuing God, but, but they weren't doing it for themselves. They were doing it for you. He says, they served us, and in the same way we're to serve others, and all of us do it, because ultimately Christ served us all. These are trying times. Times where we're never really sure what's going to happen the next day. You may have heard that there were a couple of churches that met that one additional week. I think one of them was in Arkansas. And now they're reporting that both of those churches are starting to have people who are starting to show symptoms and the illness maybe is in those churches. I don't know what, hold, what tomorrow holds, but I know who's holding my hand today. What's your gold standard? Where's your faith? And just as importantly, what are you doing with it? Guys, there are friends and neighbors who are just as scared as we are. This is an opportunity that we have to touch, reach out to them. Drop some cookies on the door with a note that says, I'm just thinking about you. I'm hoping, I'm praying everything's okay. Use the opportunities that God gives us because because God served us in a way that's unimaginable. He sent his one and only son to this world. That son willingly, joyfully went to the cross after making himself the ultimate of servants. 
to give his life for us, a service we couldn't perform for ourselves. But there's a world full of people who are scared, who are uncertain about what's going to happen, and who are waiting for the government or the scientists to fix those feelings. When truthfully, the feeling that truly is the gold standard is not who's holding my hand today, but who's going to carry that hand into eternity. May we take the opportunity that God is giving us as the prophets and those heroes before us served us in the way they pursued the Lord, that we serve others for the same reason, for the love of the God whose Son served us. This morning, it's, I'm still getting used to this. A lot of people ask me about invitations and ask me if it bothers me if we don't have people come forward and the truth is, is I don't know about people coming forward. I just want God to touch hearts. Maybe God's touched your heart this morning. And there's an issue that maybe gold in some other form has been the most important thing in your life. You'd like to make, to make that change, to put yourself back in God's hands, and you'd like somebody praying with you about it. Our elders would love to do that. Right now on the screen is the numbers and the way that you can contact the elders by either phone or by email. They're praying every week for the congregation's requests. They also are praying daily for those people in their shepherding groups that they're trying to contact every week to check on us to see how we're doing. If, if you have a prayer request, boy, they'd love to hear from you. They'd love to pray with you. Whatever your need is, God's already got the answer. The God who knew enough to choose us before he even created anything knows exactly what we need this moment. Won't you put it in his hands? Allow him to be what only he can be, the God who supplies it all, the God who watches over us. My prayer is, is that we would have a great week trusting in the Lord, taking advantage of the opportunities that he gives us. Like once again, if you need to contact him, please do. And if, by the way, if you need to just contact another fellow, one another family member and ask them to pray with you on the phone, now, how about doing that? Let's utilize all the tools that God gives us to walk in Him. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you so very much. Father, we, we're grateful for the words that Peter shared. We're grateful for the truth that while this world seems so familiar to us and it doesn't seem quite as familiar right now, but it seems like, you know, so important in every way for us because it's what we know. We ask for you, you to give us the faith that there's something bigger, greater, far more important that awaits us. If all this goes away, if, if the economy and all the things that we're so used to never come back, it doesn't have to matter to us as believers because the gold is awaiting us in heaven the gold of being in your presence, the gold of standing before your Son, the gold of receiving that heavenly, eternal body and being able to sing praises forever. Father, give us the confidence to walk in you today. Give us the assurance to wait for you for tomorrow. And it's in your Son's name we pray. Amen. Have a great week. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, over the whole face of glory.